Uh, well, Ron, let's uh, let me see. Let me remove the spotlight here. Let's go into the Q and A session, if that's okay. Uh, are, are we okay yeah. to do Q and A now? Well, no. What I'll what I'll do there's is if, if it's if it's, yeah they can yeah go ahead. I mean go. I mean there's some questions. I'll just say yeah yeah email yeah, me. If you don't want to answer this fine or yeah. or just e say email can... email me. Yeah. You know, sure. Yeah. No, that's perfect. Uh, okay. Go ahead. So everybody... okay. Let me let me go to Jeremiah first. He had one way back when. Jeremiah. Mm. Okay. Oops. Let me do, ask on you. Oh, there sorry. I thought I clicked on mute. My bad. Uh, <laughs> you have the electric spacecraft journal issue that you were referring to sitting next to you, I believe. What issue is that? Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hang on. Oh, I put everything on the floor here. All oh, my on. questions are very simple. I promise. Uh, okay. Well, I, I, uh, it's just in terms of. Oh, hold it. Oh, I wasn't pulled it over. I, I had a bunch of them here. Uh, if, you, if you have, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what. I, I, I'll email you the. I can email you that. I just want to know. Yeah. Like we, we have them on file. I just need to know. Oh, do you? Uh, I just oh, need okay. to know which which one it is so I can just pull it up. That's that's why I was asking because if you found something interesting, like there's a lot of stuff in there. You know, between Richard Hall and everybody else who contributed to the uh, yeah. ESJ. Oh, here it is. I got it. Oh yeah, awesome. What what issue is that? <laughs> I can't. I, I'm in dim light. Hold on. Uh, it's April, May, June. T issue 10. Published December 10th, 1993. It's, it's speculation. Thank you. Where? Hold on, hold on, my camera. Uh, and so uh, I was looking at the the other question I had for you um, is I just took a look on eBay because you had mentioned this other interesting material called um, what is it uh, benzophenone I believe it's like yeah uh, yeah, yeah yeah and it's, it's also used it's also used as uh, what like a like a aromatherapy type material yeah, yeah. it's it, it's it's the smell of roses it's the sm it smells like roses <laughs> okay okay well that's <laughs> That's really convenient because you know I'm, I'm I would uh, I was going to try to share my screen, but I don't really think it's necessary. I was just going to show you a, a couple pictures of some of the um, materials I have to work with. But you know, both Mark and I have uh, carnauba wax. I have rosin here. Uh, two different types of, of uh, rosin. One is pine rosin, so that should contain those molecules that we're looking for. Um, I did make quite a bit of uh, exfoliated graphene as an electron source because I didn't just want to make an electrode. I also wanted to. Um, I also wanted to try to make a material that I could modulate its electric field externally. And so yeah. by adding the graphene, it's an electron donor. Um, not, not expertise for me, but having been handed down to me is, is something to you know, try, something interesting to try. Because uh, it's strange because in terms of, uh, they call them charge additives. And uh, I, I, if, you, if, if you use too many, if you, the thing is, the, the whole thing with an electret is is to to get the uh, ener the energy into the material. Because as I tell people, in our world we deal with surface charges. All, all the uh, and and I talked to Mark about batteries, and there was an experiment that uh, I mentioned about dropping a, a double A bat uh, the triple A's or the double A's when you drop it. It's on the YouTube. If you drop them, you can tell whether they're charged or not. But Mark knows about it. And uh, but he went. Mark looked at the batteries. But with batteries, you're still you're still the you're still still dealing with with plate charges. You understand what I mean? It, only only when you have an electret. And I'm saying if there if there is if there is an electric gridic connection, uh, you have to have materials that are polarized because. Uh, or I look at the ratio. Uh, I, I'll probably get this wrong. Uh, the ratio between a gravitation and the column force. I think the, the electric force and the is 2.5 10 to the minus 39th. The the ratio of electrostatic force is something of that order. So uh, an electret it, it shouldn't take much. Gravity should be really easy to shield and also with the electrets, uh, uh, I, I guess you, 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 you foil wrap them. Every time, 
okay. We started out. Um, so we we've built quite a few electrets now. We built uh, carnauba wax electrets and um, PVC. We we try PVC that I can tell you for sure doesn't work. Uh, we tried acrylic that kind of sort of works. Acrylic is actually somewhat easy because it's got a pretty low melting temperature. We tried uh, Lexan, which is um, polycarbonate. Polycarbonate yeah. is net positive electrolyte material already. Yeah. We tried to make it more positive by forcing injecting a charge. But okay. the, a lot of the materials, and especially with the electrolyte materials that we were trying, many of them I was thinking could be acid-based because it's very easy to have hydrogen donors and have you know, yeah. a lot yeah. of because Because the, the good thing about uh, having them, like I said, rosin is, is ab abiotic acid. Uh, people don't, I mean, you use these terms, but on the understructure, uh, and, and that, that gives you a certain conductivity. The main thing is to get the electrons uh, into the material. And also, I favor everything that has a benzene ring to it. Uh, I, I view it as a, a non-bulk superconductor. You have a benzene uh -huh. ring with, with circulating electrons. And I'm saying, my God, I mean, Podkletnov spends all this time trying to make a one, two, three ceramic superconductor. And you may not need, you may not need a bulk superconductor a non-bulk benzene ring uh, may be sufficient. And of course, I base everything on roads. If I didn't have roads to go by, uh, he was heckled uh, uh, beyond dimension. And, and this guy, in terms of his background, uh, uh, everything he did was uh, uh, meticulous. He was also involved with a, a Kitt Peak Observatory uh, telescope. So anyhow, uh, uh, yeah, let, let me let me go next, Ron. Let me go next to Gravity Alchemist. Okay. And Gravity, are you there? Let me see. I'm going to ask you Hello. to unmute. And... Hi, can you hear me? Hi. Ah. Okay, oh. great, great. Hey, well, thanks. Uh, you know, I really enjoyed these oh. presentations. Uh, Ron, oh, oh, oh. Your, your name again? Bill. Bill Gregory. Bill Gregory. Okay. Bill I'm... Gregory. I, I live in Roswell, New Mexico. Oh, out here. I, I, I work with a lot of guys at Sandia National Labs. Oh, okay. And, uh, oh, but I'll tell you what. You ready for this? I, I can mention. I can mention this now. Do you know about William Rhodes and his photographs? You know, I've got to check that out. I, I, I don't. I, I do know a lot of the guys personally out there. I know some. I did a technology exchange with the Los Alamos Laboratories. Oh, but, okay. I, I'm not a scientist. Uh, I am an innovator. Uh, I guess I'm genetically predisposed to uh, trying to come up with uh, uh, propulsion machines because my grandfather was an inventor and he actually built a rotary engine in 1920. Well, he started in 23 and he got it done in 39 and the United States government confiscated his oh motor. I, I've got photographs of it. I got photographs of him standing next to it. it it's, a, it's a great story. But uh, anyway, uh, it's what I, I, since your brother is a patent attorney, right now, I did a pitch to the National Science Foundation and they, they uh, for an SBIR. Yeah. And so they wanted me to send them an elevated pitch. Oh. Now. And so now, since with this COVID and everything, it's like, uh, it's like, it's, I, I, I just, I don't know. I got writer's block or whatever. I need somebody that can write technical oh. papers because I, I have all the ideas, but I don't have the nomenclature yet, but I'm, I'm starting to, to get the nomenclature. And if I don't know it, I'm making it up as I go. <laughs> but since they asked me to, for an elevated pitch, cause they, they, they invited me to send them one, uh, you know, I, f I feel like I got something maybe. So okay. I've got a couple of ideas. But I wanted to know if if everybody that sends a uh, a pitch gets an invite, or is this something special? I know they probably only pick about you know five percent of the people that yeah. well, submit proposals. Thing, yeah, because like myself, uh, I, I required so much time, and uh, I had a few friends of mine. This this goes back into the eighties. The status now, I cannot tell you what it's like now. But there's something called AF Works, A F W E R X. I wrote that uh, down. Pardon? I wrote that down. Yeah, I I, yeah. I take good notes. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. But, but what I want to mention, my mentor Rhodes, uh, there's he he photographed 
UFOs a few days after Roswell. Are you aware of that? Uh, I'm not of Rhodes in the photographs, but I, I do have personal contact with folks that uh, were directly involved. Okay. Because if, if you, the website, if you want to, if anybody wants to write this down, the, the website is Poor Shadower, F O R E S H A W, Shadow, S H A D O W E R dot net. Uh, Ron, it's Tim. Can I jump in real quick? Um, did you change your mic? You got really faint all of a sudden. Oh, no, I didn't. Hold it. Hold it. Uh, I thought, uh, uh, I, okay, I should be loud. I should be, no. You, 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 your, your voice dropped out. Oh, am I here? A little bit better. Okay. Okay. How, how, how well, is it? Is, is it yeah, yeah, because I can hear I can hear Bill fine. So so I think it's something something about your mic may be changed. I'm not sure I'll, what. I'll, I'll try to I'll get louder. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. well, Bill, was it was that everything you had? Uh, well, it's not everything I have. I, oh, I, well, I okay. Invite, well, good. invite everybody to my website. I've got a website called gravityalchemist.com. Okay, okay. I'm not, and I'm, not, I'm not selling anything, but uh, I guess maybe I'm a little narcissistic. I'm a little bit uh, arrogant, uh, but I'm very shy too. I don't know why I have all these <laughs> feelings about my inventions and ideas. Uh, they're unusual. Uh, but with an artistic flair, because I'm more of an artist, like I said, I'm not classically trained as a scientist, but I get along well with uh, high level scientists. That, like I said, I did a, a, a technology exchange with a, a national laboratory, and I've got a lot of friends that work in laboratories, but uh, they're my people. But when I was uh, born, I was an insurance agent for 44 years. And so my parents misidentified me as a uh, insurance agent. So I sold insurance for 44 years. But anyway, uh, I love this program. I, I love you guys. And uh, I'm, I'm really excited about this whole thing. I feel like I'm going to con conquer gravity. So check me out at my website. And uh, that's all I have to say. Wonderful. Well, thank you for joining us. Thank you for, for popping by. And uh, yeah, the Gravity Alchemist site, you know, everybody take a look at that. Uh, so let me see, let me go and see if anybody else has questions. Uh, Clay Lambert in chat had mentioned that he is, uh, talking to AF works. So, uh, okay. and, and then Jeremy just did a link drop gravityalchemist.com. Uh, so Jeremy, did you have, did you have another question for Ron? Truth be told, I have a thousand questions to run. Uh, okay, well, yeah, go for it. Just, and I just can, you know, go go on that afterwards. Yeah, just but. just be aware that we we have some microphone. We're limping along with Ron's mic for the last few, but but other than that, okay. no, that's fine. I um, I, I guess I, my my last remaining question would be um, uh, if I get this material that that we would mentioned earlier, this other benzene material, and uh. I want to suspend it so that it doesn't neutralize itself, right? So I'd want to suspend it in Carnuba or something else like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then, so I would also want to highly positively charge it or negatively charge it. Uh, uh, do do well, I want to remove electrons or add them? Well, you, you, well the thing, yeah, you, the things you want to polarize it. Uh, it's, I, I, I always use one polarity. <laughs> it's, it's, I always, I always run a negative polarity on the top. Okay, so your your plate is in intimate contact with the material that's positively connected, yeah. and then the plate that's not in intimate contact, that's at a distance, just to create yeah. the electric field necessary for polarization, that's negative. So that means your electrolyte would be positive. The electrons present on the plate that's not in contact will push the electrons out of the material into that positive plate that's on the bottom there, right? Yeah. yeah okay, so that's, that's what we'll do then. We'll do that. Yeah. Okay, because <laughs> it's odd. Also, as I mentioned, in terms of the materials uh, uh, for electrodes, uh, I have ten electrodes. What I I couldn't get, I couldn't find ten electrodes, but I found ten over over steel. It's, we have lead, copper, aluminum, tin. Uh, we have galvanized materials. We have access to a lot of different things. I mean, what would be the ideal thing if we could choose it? Uh, I'll tell you what. For for research purposes, oddly enough, uh, it's kind of costly. But what I'd like to do is use tin 
on the bottom, an ITO. What's ITO? Indian tantalium oxide. Oh, it's, okay. <laughs> it's the, it's your touch screen. Let me uh, type that one in for my research later. Okay, Indian what it is, uh, ITO. You know the touch screen on the touch screen you have? Oh, on your on iPhone, an iPhone. Okay, that's so it's a, it's a clear conductive coating material. Yeah, that you, because okay. what is seeing these seeing what's going on? Uh, I I once made a paraffin, a simple. I was working with a paraffin electret, and I, I was throwing probably fifteen thousand volts into it, and I'm there, and it's, the, the temperature falls well below melting point. And I say, my God, why isn't it solidifying? I figured, well, I'll turn it off. And as soon as I turned it off, it solidified. See, that's really interesting. I heard you say that, that experiment and tell us about that. We tried that. We could not get the same kind of behavior. But I will tell you some interesting things that happened, um, especially because we, we tried additives. Yeah. One of the things we noticed is that if we, if we had a powder additive, powder dielectric into the wax, it would gravitate towards the internal space between the electrodes because that, it has a higher K value and it would yeah. suck out all of that material from the wax, leaving it completely clean. Like we had never added any powder at all. It's, it's really kind of impressive. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the other thing we noticed is the stresses that the material is under. Like you could get a perfect formulation of a material that was really stable. It would cool off and wouldn't crack, right? Yeah. But when you put it under electric stresses, it becomes incredibly much more difficult to try to make that material not crack, especially if you yeah. have it at high potentials of 40 to 50,000, like some of those that we were working with. You know? Yeah, because myself, my limit, uh, my, my, a lot of my experiments were done with a photo, photocopier. Oh, that's, well, but, that's, that's and, not and, mine. Yeah, and then I went to 20,000 volts. But here's the odd part is, the, the main thing is you don't want to rupture an electret. Because a lot of times I'll start out low and as it's, as it's solidifying, I ramp it up. Uh, also, when it becomes less molten, it becomes less likely to, to leak through anything. So when it solidifies a little bit, I can then push the, uh, the voltage up. Uh, but the main thing is just to keep it slightly conductive. You, you don't wanna, uh, the limit is about, if I'm over one milliamp, that's a lot. And, uh, that, that makes about sense. So you would need to keep it liquid for long enough to basically get those charges out of there. Yeah, yeah. And, and so main, the main thing is alignment because because I tell people all the material we have around around us, nothing is really polarized. Uh, uh, nothing has an, internal uh, charges to it. And so the nice part about it is when you wrap an electret, there's no there's nothing external. It's all it's all in that package. You, you have a Faraday cage. And so in terms of proving, oh, ah, this is one thing. There are so many things. Uh, this, this is really, uh, I might, uh, that in my patent, uh, there's a guy by the name of Nick Reiter, R-E-I-T-E-R. Uh, Nick Reiter, uh, he's now gone. He worked for Mc, uh, the Mas McMaster, the guy who developed the, uh, the silicon uh, chip, the silicon disc. Oh, wow. He worked for him. And... Uh, they were interested in gravitics. And uh, what Nick found out, uh, he was into charged materials. And he was, he actually was into chiral materials. And what he would do, he would take, he would take sugar crystals. He put them in a sealed glass tube and he would shake them. And then he'd weigh them. Charge, they'd give one value. And over time, the charges would recombine. So as long as the, those piezoelectric crystals were charged, they, they would weigh lighter. And, and then as the charges got back to normal, it, the weight would get back to normal. Then it you, sounds like you know, test tube and fill it with sugar, shake it up like all hell and stick it on the scale. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and then he'd use, uh, uh, hold it, hold it, it's uh, Rochelle salt, like uh, Rochelle salt is a- oh, is yeah, a that's common. how it's really electric. It even glows when you snap it. He used that, and he used a lot of material. And I'm not sure. He, and but the main thing is, in terms of showing that gravity is electrostatic, in terms of being an elegant material, uh, I tell people that chiral materials, uh, like quartz, we have alpha and beta quartz. Uh, uh, chiral materials, a lot of them are piezoelectric. 
And so, so like I said, this elegant experiment that Ryder performed uh, can only show you that uh, I don't see anybody can criticize it because you have a sealed tube, you shake it up, it has a weight loss, and as the charges recombine, as the charges recombine, it goes back to its weight. Uh, so, and, and uh, that's pretty, but, but Ryder, like I said, he was a, uh, uh, I, I think, uh, did I cover, there was one other item. Uh, it may have been on the chiral, oh yeah, when, when uh, uh, McCandless was on. McCandless and the ARV, uh, and uh, we were talking about Herkimer diamonds. Oh yeah, I remember that. Oh yeah, there you go. And uh, uh, Herkimer diamonds always intrigued me. And uh, as I probably mentioned, uh, uh, being a friend of Les Adam, there was a glass company that was working on the uh, electric glass. And uh, they were on the flight path of Dayton International Airport. Dayton, Ohio is a big center for glass fabrication. And so in terms of working with quartz, uh, my materials, I limit my melting temperatures to the boiling point of antifreeze, about 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, a lot of my materials melt uh, at 100 C. It, it's, it's kind of, which is kind of good. But uh, in terms of going into uh, different materials, uh, also, uh, if my memory is correct, there, are you familiar with ferroelectric, ferroelectric material? A ferroelectric material, if my memory is correct, they really are an electret. They're a special class. Ferroelectric materials are self-polarizing. You have really? some- That would mean that, uh, that would mean like um, barium titanate, which is- yeah. Extremely yeah. ferroelectric would be highly uh, polarized. It would be monopolar then, right? Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying there are different these materials uh, in terms of dielectric constants. Uh, I stay under ten. Uh, uh, a a Debye, Debye is is your dipole moment. Uh, a lot of these things. Oh, oh yeah. Here we go. With chirality, with chir I always thought the limit of chirality was 360 degrees. It makes sense. The limit of chirality is not anywhere near 360 degrees. You can go way beyond it. So in, in terms of odd material and odd performances, oh, I wanted to mention in terms of uh, strange materials, there is a, uh, it's worthwhile looking at. It's called Herbert Smithite. Her Herbert Smithite is one of the most exotic uh, materials Herbert Smithite. I'm trying to find it right now. Herbert Smithite. Um, Ron. Found it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, what, what, what should we be uh, doing with this Herbert Smithite if we well, acquire well, it? You know, here's the odd part about Herbert Smithite. It's the structure. You see, uh, when I, if you go through a, a book, you'll see hexagons prevail everywhere. There are, in a, in a chemical catalog, you'll find about, I'd say 70, oh, I'll, I'll, conservatively, 75% of the materials in a, in a alpha Azar catalog are benzene, ring, are benzene ring materials. Benzene mm -hmm. rings prevail everywhere. Uh, even one of Grubinikov, he got involved with honeycombs. And, and with honeycombs, oh. oh. Hey, hey, Mark, while, while Jeremiah is, is checking on that, I'm going to let you know, or uh, Ron, I'm sorry. We're at the four o'clock mark. Um, so if if we're all done with Q and A, I mean, yeah. we can keep going. Or let's or, keep going. Okay, okay, let's do that. And then after this, um, Mark doesn't have a whole lot to share, but him and Jeremiah together can, okay. can double team things. But yeah, okay. sorry for interrupting. That's okay. Uh, Ron, I, I just wanted to say one thing that I noticed. Uh, you mentioned. Uh, uh, the materials for the electrodes becoming liquid. Um, oh, yeah. So what we noticed when we were working with materials such as Lexan and acrylic is that there's a sweet spot where they're not exactly liquid, but they're kind of like pliable. They're yeah. like, and that's where you want it to be at. If you, if you get it past that point, the bubbles start to form. Yeah, in yeah. And then um, the electric doesn't form. But if you get it just to the point where it's yeah. like a little bit flexible, that's when it really, um, that's when you could really make the proper electric. Yeah. 
Yeah, but 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 the, those electrolytes that you're making with 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 a, a plastic material, uh, they are they are heterocharged electrolytes. They are largely surface. Uh, to get a uh, a, a, a binary electret, a homocharged electret, you need two components. It's like it's like the beeswax and the carnauba wax. Uh, there's a rule in chemistry: uh, acid, acid, oh, 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 acid plus alcohol. If you take an acid plus an alcohol, you get an ester, like polyester. Uh, with oddly enough, with the formulation of beeswax, uh, your uh, your 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 acid is abiotic acid from the rosin, and then your 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 uh, OH group uh, is the uh, the wax. So it, it's very strange that the uh, the carnauba ro rosin uh, thing is 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 really uh, it's really a unique formulation that I have no idea how. Uh, Iguchi came across it, but the, but but bear in mind, like I said, when you're dealing with a, a, a plastic that, that you're melting, uh, you're dealing with a, a one component, and uh, with my electrets, they're largely they're largely like a, a diode. You have two, you have a polar element, and you have a nonpolar element, and sometimes you'll add, throw in a charge additive, and so th that's where I largely am. But in terms of experience, going into researching other materials. Uh, these are zones that I don't go to. So it's good that people are going to other zones. And so. Yes. yes. Uh, what you're talking about with the battery, uh, bound, uh, the battery. Yeah. Yeah. So what's going on over there is um, the density of the material is changing. It goes from being a liquid internally. So there's like a dampening effect in the okay. when it's fully charged because there's water inside. It's like a, a shock absorber. And then when it's when the alkali battery is fully discharged, the hydrogen and oxygen atoms are now inside of the uh, anode and the cathode, and okay. no longer liquid. So it's like a solid material, and then has a higher uh, buoyancy effect. That's why you have um, yeah. when you drop a fully charged battery or yeah. a brand new alkaline battery, it thuds. You know, it doesn't bounce, and then when it's discharged, it bounces. Because when I saw that. I go. This is this is strange stuff. I thought, you know, there's something. <laughs> I always, I, I thought, you know, what what is going on inside there? And it's good you answered that question because I was thinking, you know, how in the heck, you know, there's something going on. And when you see something going on, uh, like I said with roads, I like starting with a good observation. Uh, you start with a good observation, and, and then you build on something solid. And uh, so that's where I, I largely am. Is just the uh, uh, you, you find that's why I got into this, and it's good. I uh, good that I met Rhodes, and uh, like I said, he thought it was a, a crystal, and I said, well, you can you cannot make a crystal that large. I said it has to be an electret, and th that changed everything. And so, uh, so in terms of uh, tr it, I, I don't know how many were made. I even went as far as looking at military surplus, uh, all kinds of websites, and. Uh, uh, it, it may have been on a, a submarine or it may have been on a destroyer. So it's, 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 uh, that, that's, that's what I do. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rob, I know I have a thousand one questions, but I have one more for you. And this one's kind of an important one. With all of your Electra experiments and, and the various ways you've tried to build these things, um, have you been able to successfully make any of them work temporarily or enough to, uh, to do an experiment? Well, see, the whole thing is, uh, I have had, like I said, with the, that that the the second harmonic generator, and and uh, I've had this inversion. It's just a slight effect. It just gives you, like I said, I have a plate. Uh, where am I here? I have a metal plate on one side that's heavy, and then the other side is a mesh screen, and so I have seen a, a very small difference differential of about three hundredths of a gram to maybe four hundredths of a gram. Uh, if, if it got larger, I would have made a YouTube. And uh, yeah. but, yeah. but, but I ask a really critical question on this is what we've seen too because we've seen something similar too. But we had a we what we did is uh, we had the sample close to the scale, so we had taken a, a plastic mm -hmm. cup and raised it up off the scale a little bit because you know it's it's somewhat electric char electrically charged, and we made it at yeah. a much higher voltage, so there was an obvious feel that you could feel around yeah. the house. Yeah. It was fresh yeah. off the fresh off the hot plate, right? So. Yeah. Um, we noticed, though, that when we raised it far away from the table and far away from the scale, about two and a half feet, that 
the force we were measuring, the difference between flipped upside down and right side up completely went away. But if we yeah. stuck it back down close to the table, you know, we could get that electrostatic attraction effect yeah. right away. So I, I have to ask the question, and I'm, I'm sure you didn't, but how close was it was, uh, was it to the table or the scale? Well, I have a, I, I was, I use, it might not be a great choice because it's electrostatic in nature. A sty I use styrofoam as the shield. That's, that's fine, but just to raise it up, like you did try to raise it far away from, from the measuring apparatus? No, 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 no. 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 I, I never, because the, the thing is, in terms of being wrapped, these things are wrapped in a Faraday cage. Oh, you had them enclosed when you tested this. Yeah, yeah, hold on. Oh, hold well, that second. changes everything then, doesn't it? Hold on. Yeah, <laughs> that, hold on. that answers all my questions, Ron. Thank no, you. No, hold on, hang on, hang on. Stop, stop. You're not getting away. Awesome. No, no, I don't want to go anywhere. I want to see this. This is what I came for. Uh, what I do have is a field meter. <laughs> hey, that's nice. I got to get you one of those. And it's, uh, where's it from? It's, uh, I think uh, it's a simple website, amazingone.com. Oh, I know those guys. Yeah, that's... Uh... Information Unlimited. It's Bobby and Amy. Right. Hey, uh, let me let me break in here real quick. Jeremy Reese has he's had his hand opened. Uh, Jeremy, can I ask you to unmute, sir? Yeah, Ron. At the early in the your presentation, you mentioned a guy named Evans. Um, uh, Ron Evans, Project Ron, Green Glow. Yes, that was Ron Evans. On oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Or was there yeah. another Evans? Well, because what is he, he? He was on the screen because we said hello. Uh, it was Ron Evans. He worked for British Aerospace. Right. The same uh, guy. Yeah, I think that might have been might have been it. I thought it was a different. I thought it was a different Evans in, in early. Yeah, in the I, I think there is. Yeah, I think you're correct. There is another Evans. There, I know of another. It's just I can't. Uh, but Ron Evans. Albert. Ron, yeah. uh, and and like I said, him. and like I said, uh, I think uh, Rob Chambers. Uh, is did open a new Project Green Glow group. Uh, I remember. I, I don't know how many. I, I remember seeing it. Uh, I, I, I have to email them and see what's going on with Green Glow. But but, but it was a, a unique time with Green Glow. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Nick Cook. Nick Nick Cook gave us coverage in uh, uh, Avi uh, Jane's Defense Weekly. Oh, uh, another Rob, question. Rob Chambers is saying he moved it into groups.io. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. And uh, so, but yeah, your Rob Chambers, uh, can, can, he's in he's in the UK or somewhere, over, oh, he's maybe in France, but he's from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, he, he's saying oh, nice. Green Glow, just so that we have it on the on air, Green Glow at groups.io. So look up Green Glow at groups.io. Um, now, Jeremy, while I have you on the channel, you you had some UAP stuff. Is that something you can talk about perhaps later, or or would that be something for another day? Um, what was that? What was that in regards to? Um, just oh, uh, you you were working on a, like a UAP. Let me see, a UAPTF, some kind of a summary for UAPTF. Yeah, I've been meaning to put together something based on all the stuff that's come to, to light on these presentations. Um, okay, I feel well, like our scientists, I feel like the scientists that we've had present here kind of like know a lot more than the Pentagon's telling our, our, our senators with that UAP task force thing. Well, why, why don't that, we why don't we touch on that in, in a bit then after Ron? And I'm sorry for I'm sorry for interrupting. I just wanted to catch you while I had you on mic. Yeah, I definitely would like to talk and get Ron's input on that as well, because he's definitely one of the guys uh, we've been waiting to have on for a while now and, and get some input on this. And, and he, you, you covered a, a ton of material. I, I don't even know where to begin <laughs> with the questions and stuff. Um, they want to know more about uh, your thoughts for an inertial drag, loss of inertial drag in gravity and um, more on that kinematic, I think more on that kinematic stuff and uh what you can tell us about the research that went on there with, with uh, GE and that was uh, Henry William Wallace. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It's uh, uh, they're, they're, like I said, Rex research. Uh, does anybody here use Rex research.com? Yeah. It's a great yeah. site. Yeah. Cause he has uh, stuff on Wallace and uh, his name is Robert Nelson. Neat guy. Okay. Okay. Sorry. All right. Uh, 
Oh, I, I'm sorry, Michael, Michael Boyd had a question. Uh, Michael? And let me see, I'll ask him on mute. Hey, Ron, I got a question. Yeah, yeah, you, have a, you do a lot of patent work, by God. In terms of, I look at your stuff, I go, oh, this, how many, how many, how many, how many, how many patents do you have? I go, I go through it all. Uh, I have, I have four, and I'm working on a, a fifth one. Okay, yeah, I go, it's, it, it's, I go. Uh, they the, published the application, but they haven't issued the pat, the fifth one yet. So. Oh well, I'll tell you one thing. Uh, I'll mention this while I'm here. Uh, uh, the, the, there is, I have a patent application in there. It's, uh, I'll tell you what, maybe uh, give me your question first and then, then it will, <laughs> then we'll get back to some, one other issue. So I'm curious about this, uh, dielectric material that you're, fa you're fabricating and, uh, the, the electrical properties, is it, uh, high resistant, highly re resistive? Material or is it no, like leaky? No. A leaky capacitor is yeah, uh... well, with, with an electret. You want to balance. Uh, you you want to have it conductive to get the electrons into the material. Uh, you want to, the main thing is polarization, and uh, it's the the dielectric constants are low. I mean, uh, I, I think my materials uh, dielectric. Con oh, well, hold on a minute. I I doubt if my materials go over a dielectric constant of uh, five okay uh, and that's uh, that's about as high as i go uh so like I, i've had experience with uh, this dielectric material called silicon nitride they use it oh. to make jet engine parts and it's yeah uh, yeah yeah it's uh i think it's dielectric constant 6.2 oh. and um one of the things you talked about is in the fab process that uh you lose the polarization and that um, and and uh, I had this, and what that would do is cause the resistance of the dielectric to be lower than if you're pole, if you have a, 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 a polar dielectric, it's it's has a higher resistivity. And so one of the techniques that uh, works with uh, oxides that I, I, I had a, one of my early patents on, it's called photoanodic oxide. And essentially what I did is when we were uh, depositing the, the oxide onto the, the semiconductor material, I'd expose it, expose it to a light, a, a bright light, and it would make all the electrons basically polarize and point and lock it into the place. And then, and then when, it, when it, it solidified or went into the solid state, it would lock it in to place so that it wouldn't uh, the, it, it wouldn't depolarize it essentially it would maintain the polarization by exposure to light. Okay. And, I, and 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 so I'm like curious about the dielectrics like a semiconductor it has a band gap. Yeah. Like a semiconductor. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, the I, other problem you get with dielectrics are these things called traps. Exactly. And, and the traps uh, basically trap the charge and they effectively cut the band gap in half and in certain uh, states. So it's, uh, it, it seems to me that what's important is to, when you're making this dielectric material that you want it to be as perfect a crystal as you can get. Yeah, yeah. And you don't want any dislocations because what happens is when you have a dislocation where you have a dangling bond, when you apply a, a electric field to it, especially high voltage, it traps charge, creates a charge trap. And yeah. over time, it breaks down the dielectric, starts to leak. Yeah. yeah. Like, and, uh, and, and essentially, a battery is a, is a capacitor, too. It's just a leaky capacitor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <right>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because so, well, these are just some I'm, I'm thinking about some of the challenges that you have. And I'm, and I'm curious if you've looked at any of these things of like, exposure to light. And then oh. the other thing I'm curious about is some of these materials that you're using are, are toxic. Do you do this stuff in the fume hood or something? Uh, well, uh, I'll tell you what. I'm uh, worried about your well-being. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no, no. As I tell people, I worked at, I worked for Cartex Woodbridge. It's, pro it's, it's probably now Woodbridge. Uh, they went to Canada. I worked with isocyanates. So. Uh. <laughs> 
<laughs> nerve gas, essentially. <laughs> and 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 because uh, Charles Jost, uh, he, he, who funded the Electric Spacecraft Journal, whoops, whoops, well, where am I? Okay, he funded the Electric Spacecraft Journal. Uh, he made his money on making special foam, mm -hmm. and we used to talk about isocyanates and the toxicity and. Uh, we were both the same age and so far I seem to have outlived, he died of, it's sad that he died. Uh, I, it was so unexpected. But in terms of uh, when you work around like isocyanates, because uh, myself, I always worked with a minimum of five rubber gloves. And we had a problem in the lab once uh, on windy days, because uh, the, the girl, uh, Joan, who got exposed, who got the uh, cyanide, uh, yeah, isocyanate cyanide poisoning, uh, we couldn't figure out how she got poisoned, and because uh, we we had we had the uh, the, the the hood, we left enough gap. What happened is when the lab door was open, oh, it paused it, pull it back. Yeah, pull, pull the, the pressure, back in. pull out the air. Yeah, and so that's why I warn warn people. Even if you're working in a university laboratory, wherever you're working, there are these odd quirks, and and like I said, with isocyanate. It, 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 it's it's uh, it's uh, well. Uh, you said you work with silicon nitride. Yeah, I worked on uh, silicon nitride passivation on uh, on uh, infrared detectors. Oh, oh, oh my God! That's... And, and the other advantage of silicon nitride is it's rad hard. You, I, oh. you can take it up to, to uh, a mega rad, and it still still doesn't break down. So. While an oxide, you get up to about a K rad, it's gone. It's just like because uh, glass is amorphous, so yeah, it has yeah. all these dangling bonds. So yeah. you expose it to radiation, and it just like yeah, it, it becomes real leaky. <laughs> oh, oh, what I wanted to say is, uh, uh, on my I have a really uh, junky website, uh, chirolex.com, and uh, in there I happen to find a paper by uh, uh, Dr. Uh, 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 Edward, Edward H. Baum Teller. He was involved, <laughs> he, was in, <laughs> he was involved in the electrets. But oh, the, cool. But the electret he was involved with was uh, titanium chloride. Uh, and I, but the thing is, I have no idea. Why would, it, it, it's very easy to find. Uh, it's uh, Electret Teller. Uh, uh, oh, I lost your voice. Hello? Oh, uh, I think Michael muted himself again. Uh, Michael, you're, you're muted here. Let me ask you to unmute real quick. And then we should jump to the next person after that. But Hey, uh, thanks, Ron. I got to go. Oh, okay. okay. Th thanks, it's Michael. It's good talking with you. Um, yeah, let, so let's go back to... Uh, let me see. Mark had a question from YouTube, and then we have uh, Bill, I think, after that. So, Mark, go for it. Okay, so um, we're actually streaming on two YouTube channels. We got Alien Scientists and the Falcon Space YouTube channel. And uh, Shaziz asks, Ron, have you tested the effects of negative ion generators with electrodes? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I'll give you something. Uh, I, I, I was a friend. Do you know Boyd Bushman? Oh, yeah. Okay, well, anyhow, uh, Linda Moulton Howell used to live. Linda Moulton Howell lived in Jamison, Pennsylvania. And uh, she, she, when the, the, there's a uh, Discovery Channel had the, billion, you've watched Billion Dollar Secret? Um, I don't know, but I'm interested in hearing who, who Linda Moulton Howe hanged out with. <laughs> well, yeah, a billion dollar secret is Nick Cook of Jane's Defense Weekly. Right. And Boyd Bushman. And a, a, a Bushman worked for Lockheed, uh, and he has a patent uh, on a, uh, I'll use the word woman in a second. Uh, oh, okay. Anyways, a Boyd Bushman has a series of patents. And one is uh, an electret battery. And what Boyd did is when he made his electrets, he, I think he used the Wimhurst generator. Is this what you're talking about? Wimhurst machines test and uh, Van de Graaff's? Um, negative ion generators. I guess that would just be um, like a negative power supply, I guess. Oh, okay. Because uh, uh, 
Yeah, no, it's just in terms of, you mean for establishing a charge or, 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 or whatever? Um, well, it looks like from uh, this guy on YouTube, but we do have a negative power supply with 125,000 volt output. So if, do you think there would be any difference whether we're using positive or negative uh, outputs for making an electorate? Because we've been doing all of our electorate work with uh, negative output, actually, negative to ground. Okay, okay. Because, uh, uh, like I said, uh, when I was using, uh, uh, what's the name, the, uh, the, the photocopier, uh, that was only running at 5,000 volts, and uh, I was using the, the external shield. What is, it's funny, uh, the, when you look at a power supply from a photocopier, the, the lead goes to the outside of the box. And so, so in terms of being hot, the, the one thing you don't want to be is the ground for a, uh, a photocopier uh, power supply. Right. Okay. okay. Uh, let me go to Gravity Alchemist again. And I think that's Bill, right? Yes. Do you hear me now? Okay, great. I, I think uh, I wanted to ask Ron a second. I, I've got uh, a magnet that I took off my refrigerator and uh, it's sort of an experiment. I'm going to try and show it to you if, if you can see it. I, let's see. Uh, so it's styrofoam. Okay. This is styrofoam. And let me get them. I'm on a laptop. So now the strange thing about the styrofoam is the center of gravity. So like if I let it go, it pops up. And, and it really feels like it feels like it's pulling by Earth's gravity. And no matter how I put it, it's going to pop up. Uh, and it's like a kid's toy. But it's not like uh, you put a weight in the bottom of one of those dolls and you, you hit it and it, it always pops back up. It, it, it actually, I actually feel like I feel a force. And maybe somebody want, might want to try that sometime and, yeah. and try to explain that to me since well, I'm not a scientist. Well, what, what, what it is, it, it's, a tri it's, it's, contract, it's contact electri electrification. That the, as I mentioned before, there's something called the Tribo Electric Series. Oh, and if you look at the tribo electric series, uh, you'll see how it's charging. As I mentioned, there's also something called the electro uh, electrophorus, and uh, what it's uh, I forget what the materials are nowadays. But you simply brought them in contact with one another, and they charge by contact. But the tribo electric series and the uh, contact con called contact contact electrification. But that's what you're seeing is going on there. Interesting. Well, it works on any surface. Uh, yeah. It doesn't matter what it, what it is. Yeah. Well, we say what it is. Uh, st styrofoam? styrofoam? Yeah. It, it's the kind of styrofoam that you put flowers in, or I've yeah. even done yeah. it on regular styrofoam and it does the okay. same thing. But, but uh, styrofoam, styrene. Uh, styrene. styrene. It's basically foam styrene. Styrene, the technical name for styrene is vinyl benzene. There are benzene rings in that material. Wow, wow, I can really feel it. It's amazing. Yeah, so like I said, it's, uh, like I said, when we use the word styrofoam, uh, it's, it's, it's a styrene material, and that styrene material is vinyl benzene. So it's, it's, a, uh, it's a strange material, that's all. Okay, okay, okay cool. Okay, and, uh, let me see. So let me, let me ask who, has, who else has questions. Anybody else you want to mention them in chat? Raise your hands or anything along those lines. Okay. Well, we could just move to open discussion, guys. Uh, do, you, do you want to do that? If, if we're all set, if we're all set on questions, do you want to just move on to open discussion at this point? Oh, sure. Um, I think Jeremiah had some stuff to show us um, that he was working on these past few. Uh... OK, well, but before we do that, though, I want to give I, I neglected to do this earlier, sir. I apologize. Let's let's give Ron an enormous hand. Ron, thank you, sir. Thank you very, very, very much. A long overdue, long overdue and very welcome presentation. And. Uh, we would love to have you present more as well in the future.